Hi there, welcome to Ink Out Loud Studio. Today we are going to work on a Borealis landscape piece. Uh, but before we get started, let's talk about the materials and the tools you'll need to achieve this. Um, first, you want to uh, lay down some plastic over your work surface. Alcohol ink will stain. Um, and so you wanna make sure you're protecting the surfaces that you're working on. You can also uh, wear gloves because the ink will stain your fingers. I, uh, I don't wear gloves when I work with alcohol ink. I find uh, it kind of limits my dexterity. And to be quite honest, I actually really like when my hands are stained with ink. Um, I kind of wear it like a badge of honor. So, um, so I don't wear gloves, but you certainly can if you're concerned about your hands uh, getting stained. Um, also, you want to think about ventilation. We're working on a pretty small scale, so just opening a window and letting some air flow uh, is sufficient. Um, when you start to scale up and work with m larger amounts of ink and alcohol, uh, then you need to think about a, a proper ventilation system and things like that. Um, but it is, you know, alcohol ink is uh, made with isopropyl alcohol and it's very fumy, so you want to just take the proper precautions there. Okay. Let's talk about our substrate. So we are working with UPO paper today. UPO paper is a non, is a plastic paper, it's non-porous. Um, alcohol ink needs to be applied to a non-porous surface or it will just soak right in. UPO paper is my uh, preferred substrate. I use a lot of UPO paper. Um, there are other substrates that you can use, but for this purpose, we'll be using UPO paper. I also laid down a piece of paper towel on top of my plastic and underneath my UPO paper. Uh, what this does is it helps to first protect the plastic so that we can continue to use that plastic for longer um, without having to replace it so often. And also it will uh, serve to absorb the alcohol ink as I um, start to wash the ink off the paper uh, with alcohol. Okay, let's talk alcohol ink. Alcohol ink is a pigment that's carried in isopropyl alcohol and you apply it to your non-porous surface and the alcohol dissipates away and leaves the pigment behind. Um, you'll want to choose two to three colors for your piece, uh, maybe four. I think I've gone with four, four colors today. Um, the more colors you add, the more likely you are to get a muddied effect. So um, when you're starting out, limit yourself to two or three colors um, and you'll have a more successful outcome. So today I am using these three colors. Uh, they're Ranger Ink. That's my preferred uh, brand of ink to use. And um, I have a color called Patina. I have Mountain Rose and I have Wild Plum. Uh, Mountain Rose is actually a discontinued color. Uh, it makes me very sad. I love some Mountain Rose. So I actually have three or four bottles in my stock. Um, and when they're gone, they're gone. So, um, And then for my Mountain Range, I chose this color. It's called Indigo. And I like Indigo because um, I like the viscosity of it. You'll find that the different each different ink color has a different viscosity. Some are thinner, some are thicker, some are more transparent, some are more opaque. Um, and you'll start to learn, you know, which ones you prefer to use for different applications. So I chose four colors, three for my sky, my water, one for my mountain range. We're also going to use a mixative. Um, this is also by Ranger. You can't really see the label because it's covered, <laughs> covered with the mixative, um, but it's a silver mixative, um, also sold by Ranger. So we'll be using that. You're going to want to find some 91% isopropyl alcohol. It needs to be at least 91%. It can be 99%, but it needs to be at least 91%. And you'll want to have a just a cup or a glass or a jar to put a little bit in uh, to dip your brush, clean your brushes, things like that. Next, we have this little bottle. 
Um, this, it has filled with alcohol. I filled it with alcohol and it has a fine tip on it, fine opening. And we use this to wash our piece uh, with alcohol. If you don't have one of these, it's not the end of the world and you don't have to wait to do your project. You can, you can also use a pipette um, and they come in different sizes. This is actually a pretty large pipette. Uh, I have some smaller ones as well. Or you can simply just dip a paintbrush in alcohol and use that to kind of drip down your sky. Um, all all uh, viable options. I use coffee stir sticks. So the coffee stir stick uh, that I prefer comes from a popular um, coffee and donut shop in the US. And the reason I like it is it's in the shape of an X. And so it has four edges on it. Um, and you really are using that edge to move the ink around. You can use a more straw-like coffee stir stick. Um, it just won't have the same effect. If you don't have coffee stir sticks, you can try a, the edge of a credit card or a key card. Um, anything with a hard plastic edge to move the ink around will work just fine. You'll want to have some cotton swabs on hand. These are just regular cotton swabs. I also like to have these pointy cotton swabs on hand. They um, are found at your local beauty supply store in the nails section. And I find that having this point on here uh, is really helpful, especially when I'm doing fine detail work, not necessarily for what we're doing today, but I do always have them on hand. You're going to want two toothbrushes, um, one for moving the ink around and one for spattering your mixative. And you wanna definitely have two separate ones uh, because the mixative will um, get into your uh, alcohol and it just causes a mess. So I've found that it's good to have two separate ones. You will also want to have a pencil with an eraser on it um, to stamp your moons. And I have paint palettes, um, lots of them. I buy them six for a dollar at the dollar store. I never clean them out um, because I use the dried ink. I'll, I'll reconstitute it and I will use it for other smaller projects like when I'm doing jewelry paintings and things like that. Lastly, you're going to need just some scraps to mask off the areas that you don't want to spatter with your mixative when we're putting our stars in. Um, these are just cutoffs of UPO from other projects. You can use cardstock, um, anything that's thick enough that's not gonna allow the, the ink to seep through to your painting. I think that covers it and let's get started. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna take our three colors that we selected for our sky. And I like to lay down the lightest color. This is actually a discontinued color from Ranger called uh, Mountain Rose. I love it and I'm so sad they discontinued it. Um, and I like to lay down my ink. We're going straight from the bottle in sort of a diagonal direction. And I also like to kind of mimic it at the bottom. And what we're gonna hopefully accomplish there is when we put our water down under our mountains, we're going to reflect the sky that way. I'm gonna take some of this wild plum. I'm gonna add a little bit of that to my sky. And eventually we're basically just gonna be washing this ink away. Um, and it's going to kind of leave its residue on the paper. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this patina color as well. And you really never know exactly what you're gonna get when you put alcohol ink down in this way. It kind of blends together and that's the magic though. So I like to take this little brush and make sure that all of my kind of white spots are covered. I found that when I don't do that, 
sorry, I think I was just shaking my camera. When I don't do that, um, it can leave almost negative stains, you know, negative white space stains. And I don't really like the way that looks. So I just kind of take my brush and make sure there's just a little bit of color on there. We're not worried, necessarily worried about what color or making it a certain color. So right now it's looking like a mess, right? That's the magic. We're going to make magic. Okay. All right, so then while my ink is still somewhat wet, it's not completely saturated and wet, but it's still a little bit wet. I'm gonna take my mountain range color, which I chose indigo. I really like the way the indigo kind of moves. You'll find that each ink has its own viscosity and some are more viscous than others. I like the viscosity of this one when, when I'm making uh, mountain ranges. So. I decided to go with that one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come a third of the way up from our the bottom of our piece of Yupo, and we're going to lay our mountain range down. You don't wanna do it halfway. The eye likes things in thirds. It's the rule of thirds. So we're gonna have a third of water, a third of mountain range, and a third of sky. So I'm gonna come about a third of the way up, and I'm gonna just squeeze my ink and drag it across my paper. I like to squeeze a little bit more on one end and a little bit less on the other end, um, just so it has more natural kind of mountainy feel. And the ink is gonna move on its own. We're not gonna mess with it at this point. We're just gonna kind of let it do its own thing. And it will start to create its own kind of ridge effect. I am gonna fiddle with this just a little bit right on that edge there. So it looks like it's going right off the edge. Okay. So we're gonna let that pretty much dry completely. Um, and you can speed up the drying process by blowing on it. Um, I am often impatient and end up doing that. And, uh, but I'm for, for this, for our purposes, I'm gonna try to, try to be patient and let it just dry on its own. So what you'll see is about a third of the way up, we have our mountain range starting. Now, below that is gonna reflect the mountains and it's gonna reflect the sky once we add our water in there. So we want our mountain range to come a little bit below that third so that we get a good reflection once we swipe through for our water. All right, we're getting there. You can see that it's still a little bit wet up here. My sky is drying and I want that top of that mountain range to be pretty dry when I get started. So our next step is going to be a wash with alcohol. And I uh, really like this bottle it has, you can see it has a little pin that fits inside the, the top and it has a really fine tip on it. Um, and so it works really well for this uh, purpose. Okay, so my impatience is kicking in and I'm gonna get started on my next step. So I turn my piece of Yupo and upright like this. So the top of my mountain range is here and this is gonna be my sky. And I also like to put it on its corner. And what that does is when I start to wash with my alcohol, it's gonna create movement. And it's gonna create a diagonal movement. Diagonal lines um, indicate movement. Um, so instead of going just straight up and down, I like to give it a little bit of a tilt and see some of that movement. So we're gonna take our bottle of alcohol with the fine tip and I'm gonna go along that natural ridge line that my alcohol ink created for me, and I'm gonna wash this alcohol down onto my paper towel. Okay, I'm gonna go back up here because it didn't reach there. This is where the Q-tips come in. So, I like to absorb my excess off of my edges there 
so it doesn't pool up and collect there. Sometimes your sky requires numerous passes with the alcohol and sometimes you get it just right the first time. So we're gonna let this dry and then we'll assess to see if we wanna add, whoops, add a little bit more alcohol or if it looks pretty good. I see this little spot right here. I wanna take that off, whoops. So that's this fine Q-tip works well for that. I'm actually really liking the way that this sky is looking. So I'm gonna, I don't think I'm going to give it another pass of alcohol, but if I wanted to, I would just go again, back over the same way and let it continue to wash. Sometimes you have a real dark sky, you wanna lighten it up, or the, the lines aren't working just the way you want them to, or looking just the way you want them to. So you'll, you can continue to try and, and give it some more passes. You always want to wait until your sky is completely dry before you lay it down because what will happen is if it's not dry and you lay it down, the alcohol that's on the edge of your piece will start to retreat into your sky and you'll lose that kind of movement that flows off the edge of your piece. Um, and I just, I don't really love the way that looks. So, okay, so we've got our sky. It's looking beautiful and we have our mountains, but I think I would like to lighten these mountains up a little bit. And I also think I want to try to bring in some of this um, patina color that we put in our sky. It's showing through little bits of hints of patina in there. So for this part of our piece, we're gonna use our patina color ink and my coffee stir stick another go-to tool for me, okay? And what we do is we use the edge of the coffee stir stick to move our ink around. So let me show you how we do that. I'm gonna just make a line of alcohol ink across my piece, and I'm gonna move, move it around. Oh, look, it's not even showing any of that patina color yet. Okay, but it is lightening it up, right? So we have a little bit of a dark mountain range behind. I'm gonna go back again and add some more. Now we're starting to see that patina color show up a little bit. In our range here. Still thinking I want some more of that color. So I flipped my coffee stir stick around. And I'm just using my stir stick to create another ridge line. Okay. So we have this dark mountain in the back and a little bit lighter up here. We can also drag it this way. I'm gonna go back in. You have to be flexible when you're working with alcohol ink um, and go with the flow, so to speak, uh, because alcohol ink has a mind of its own and we can, con we can try to control it doesn't always work the way we want it to. So you have to be open to going with the flow. Okay, so I think my mountains are looking pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take my toothbrush. I'm gonna dip it in my glass with alcohol and I'm gonna dab it the excess off on my paper towel and I'm going to drag it through my ink just like so. Okay 
And what that's doing is it's creating my water for me. So we're gonna let it sit for just a minute. We're going to let it work its magic. And then we're gonna go through with a few more passes. Um, we want a straight horizon line. And well, I do anyway, I'm a bit of a stickler for a straight horizon line. Um, and you know, we want to see a lot of, uh, reflection and light in that water, which we're not getting yet, but we will. So we're going to let that dry again. You can blow on it and that will speed up the drying process, but it will also change the way that the ink, uh, looks when it's done. So, you know, try these different techniques, see what works for you. Maybe you're more patient than I am. Who knows? Okay, so I dipped it, I dabbed it on the paper towel, and I'm gonna go back through again. Okay, you can see it's starting to lighten up there. I'm gonna take my brush, my paintbrush, dip it in my alcohol, dab the majority away, and create my horizon line. You'll notice when I hold my my paper down, I use just the tip of my finger uh, fingernail. And that's because you can kind of leave um, fingerprints in the ink if you put your finger directly down on it. So I have found that using my fingernail to hold down my small pieces as I work them has been a good solution for that. Okay, so I've got a pretty good horizon line there. And you can see my mountains here, we're up a third, a third, a third, right? But we still want some lightness in that water, some movement in that water. We might even wanna add a little bit of that patina color in that water, but we'll see. So I'm gonna swipe through again. Again, I'm holding my piece down with just my little fingernail there. Swipe through, swipe through until you get it looking the way you'd like it to look. And what happens is the toothbrush creates these sort of rippled, waved effects that you would get in water. See a little bit of darkness here that I'd like to address. So I'm gonna just take my brush and manipulate it a little bit. Don't be afraid to manipulate the ink. Okay, we're looking pretty good. And you can see that this color is reflected. We don't really have much of our patina, so maybe we wanna add a little bit of patina color. So I'm gonna take a palette. I'm gonna put a little bit of my patina color in the palette, don't need much. And I'm gonna take my brush and just put some of that color in there. We really want to reflect that as well. A little bit more. And don't worry, we'll go back through with our toothbrush and, oops, and um, get those waves again. Okay. Okay, that's looking pretty good in terms of color. So we'll see what happens when I pull my toothbrush through it. Move this palette out of the way. Let's see. Dab off the excess and run it through. I didn't leave a lot of that patina. The patina is a pretty light color. I could add a darker uh, aqua color if I wanted to. Um, so why don't we go ahead and try that? I have my palette right here, uh, which here's the patina right here that I put in there. This color right here is called mermaid. It's a little bit darker than patina, but maybe it's what we need in our water here to get that aqua color to sh show through. So I'm gonna reconstitute my, my ink in my palette 
and I'm going to add a little bit. Yeah, see, we're going to add a little bit of that color in there. So it's not the exact color, but it's giving this the, you know, the sense that it is. And then we have that reflection in there as well. So again, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And then I'm going to dip my toothbrush in my alcohol. And I'm going to drag it through. Take this fine tipped Q-tip, this cotton swab, and get rid of some of this darkness here. Just lift up some of that ink away, where it's not really wanting to, to come up. Okay, again, I'm gonna go back in. I'm going to drag through my toothbrush. Okay. So we've got some nice movement in our water. We've got the reflection of the sky in our water, the reflection of our mountains in our water. And the last step now is we could add stars and we can add a moon. Whoops, sorry about that. We can add stars and we can add a moon. Um, so that's a choice that you're gonna make. I'm trying to decide, I'm gonna add a little bit of lightness right there there we go okay trying to decide if i want to add silver a silver moon or stars i think for this purpose maybe we'll do stars and a moon just so you can kind of see how it's done okay so i've got my paint palette and i've got my silver mixative which has to be shaken very well uh, there's a little ball inside and that mixes up your uh, mixative. You have going to have a separate toothbrush for your um, stars and your moon. And you're also going to need to mask off your mountains. So I just use extra UPO that I have laying around from cutoffs from other things. Um, and I just mask off my mountain range like so. And that way you won't get any silver on your mountains, just on your sky. So I'm going to squirt just a little bit in there. Okay, I'm gonna dip it, dip the, just the tip. You can see that there's silver on the tip of my toothbrush. That's because I dip it in just like so. And depending on how saturated you get your toothbrush, how close you get to your piece, and how hard you splatter it depends on how, you know, this uh, indicates how many stars you're going to get. So I just want light sprinkling. I use my thumb to spatter and I'm going to come up high. And I gave just a light spattering of my stars. So I'm going to remove my mask, my masking right there. Okay. And last but not least, I'm going to take a pencil, just a regular pencil with a good eraser on it. And you can see it's been used many times. Um, and I'm going to dip it in my silver mixative. I like to dip my mixative on the palette before I then stamp my moon. I'm going to find a good spot for my moon, press down and stamp it. Now that one was not a perfect stamp. So I'm just going to take, I'm obsessive about my, um, my moons being perfectly round. 
So I am going to round it out a little bit. Sometimes I get a perfect stamp, sometimes I don't. And I just like to go in and fix it a little bit. Maybe you won't be as obsessive about it as I am and that's okay too. It's the perfectionist in me, I can't help it. Okay, so. I would probably even go more crazy with trying to make that perfect, um, but for today's purpose, we're just gonna leave it be. And there you have a Borealis landscape painting. Water, mountain, Borealis sky. I hope you give it a try and share with me what you've done.